Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is the Residence Plugin Tutorial. Me and Mr. Spider here are going to teach you uh, the basics and also some stuff you probably don't even need to know. Let's start with the basics. Selecting an area using a hoe and then creating your own residence. With a wooden hoe, let's say I want to select this amazing house I've built. So I'll left click on one corner of it, and then I'll right click on the adjacent corner which selects that entire boxed in area. And now you can double check it by typing in res select size. And this is gonna show you what you've selected so far. Ignore all these other people talking. Pay no attention to that. So the area I've currently selected, X size is five, Y size is three, Z size is six. If these numbers look good and that is the area in fact that you had selected, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and type in res create then space and then type in whatever it is you want it to be named I'll go ahead and do test for this one enter and now it's just created that residence and it's charged me money since this is a really tiny area on this server a block is only worth one penny per block all the stuff I'm showing is specific to the Woodnax server, although this stuff applies to any server that uses this plugin for the most part. But when I get into specifics, I'll be using Woodnax server as the example. So I've just created this residence. Now when naming a residence, that part is never permanent. You can always rename it. How you do that is you type in res rename the old name first, which was test, and then you type in what you want it to be called instead like test five. All right, it just renamed it, so now this residence is called test five. Now keep in mind, with residences, it is case sensitive. So whenever you're trying to use commands and change things, I named mine test with a lowercase t, that's important. If you do it with a capital T or a capital whatever, like house, if it was a capital H, you have to use capital H every time when you're using commands related to that residence. So things are case sensitive, keep that in mind. Now to delete a residence, you just type in res remove, res remove, and then the name of it, which is test five. And then it'll ask you to confirm it. So you type res confirm, enter. And now that residence no longer exists and we're back to square one. I'm gonna show you another way to select an area without using a wooden hoe. So I'm gonna stand inside the house and type in res select, and now our, there's three different numbers you need to type in, and they, they relate to all three of the Minecraft coordinates. So I'll type in 5, 6, and then 2. So now it's expanded the residence in all those directions. So when I typed in 5, which is the x-coordinate, it went 5... I'm not sure which way is x and which way is z from where I'm at, but you get the point. So it went 5 in that direction and 5 in that one. And then the second number I typed in was 6, which is the Y coordinate, so it expanded 6 into the air and 6 into the sky. You understand what I'm saying here? Follow me, camera guy? So that's another way, just using commands. And you can get even more in-depth with it by typing in, say I want to expand it more in front of the front yard, on only in this direction. So you can type in res select expand, and then however many blocks you want it to extend, type in four, and now it's extended four blocks in that direction. If you wanted to select all the way up to the sky and all the way down to bedrock, there's a command just for that, res, select, and then vert, V-E-R-T, and now it's expanded all the way up and all the way down within that coordinates that you have already selected. And once again, you can double check the size that you currently have selected, if you're not sure if it's the right size of what you want, just type in res select and then size and it'll display the size for you and also how much it's going to cost. So right now the X size is 15, the Z size is 5 and since I had selected the Y size from the top to bottom it's obviously 256 blocks. Total cost would cost me 192 if I wanted to create this horrific residence which we are going to do. I'll go ahead and create this one. So it's res create test one. It's just stolen $192 from my fake bank account. And now I'm a little uh, unsatisfied with my purchase. All right, welcome to the next section where I'm going to talk about after you've created a residence, 
some things you can do to set it up a little better. When I walk in and out of it, I get these annoying default messages that says welcome to test one and now leaving test one. Those are the entering and leaving messages. You can change those to whatever you want. Type in res message enter and then say welcome and then res message leave goodbye. Now I've just, I think I just spelled goodbye wrong. Now I've just changed those two messages so when people exit and enter the residence it says welcome and goodbye. If you hate annoying messages like that, to remove them, just type in res message enter space and then type in nothing after that. You're done. Same with res message leave. Just type in space and enter and you're done. Now there's no welcome or leaving messages at all. They're gone. They're done with. All right, next I'll talk about teleportation points. Every residence has a teleporting function and to set that up, you type in res tp set all one word. And that's it, you've just done it. So wherever you're standing and where you're looking is where that teleportation point's gonna be. So if I leave this residence and then type in res tp test one, the name of the residence you wanna go to, it'll put me right there where I had done tp set. All right, next command I'll go ahead and show you is res info. Very useful to see what's going on inside your residence. Oh, before I get into that, when uh, using commands for residences, it makes a difference if you're standing in it or outside it. So I, I was just inside that res and I used res info. And I'm not in the res now. If I type in res info, it's gonna be confused as hell. So if you're not standing in a residence, you have to actually state the name of the residence that you want the info for. So type in res info test one. And now it's going to show me the info. But if you're standing inside of a residence, you don't need to state the name of the residence. With residence info, it tells you the name, tells you the owner, and it tells you all the flag permissions, which I'll explain. And this is how you can see how you have everything set up and if it's the way you need it to be, or if you need to make any changes to the flags. Next command I'll show you is res list, which is going to list all of your residences. So here's all mine on the left, and I have more than what's displayed here. So when you get an option that says page one of two, what you want to do is type in that command, space, and then put two or whatever page number you need to go to. So this page two of my res list shows me my other residences that I own. Another command is res list all. And this is going to show you absolutely nothing. So you want to do res list all all but list all needs to be one word no space in between list and all and this is going to show you every single residence that everyone owns on the server another way you can use res list is by player specific so there was a jackass bouncing around he's gone now but his username was calzor so to see what residence he owns you can type in res list and then the other player's name not calzon calzor now it's going to list, I see him in the right, he's way back there. Can you see him jumping around? Anyway, when you type in res list player name, so now I'm looking at all of his residences that he's owned. And now I can look at more info, so he has a residence called Outpost. I can uh, look at all the info for his residence that he owns by typing in res info outpost, and it's with a capital O. These are case sensitive. And now it's going to tell me all the information of that residence and how he has it set up. Alrighty, time to talk about flags. Flags are very important. It's what make uh, residents actually useful. If you're standing in a residence and you do res info, or use a piece of string and just hit it somewhere where there's a residence, it does the same thing as slash res info. Where it says flags, you can see it has a minus sign, PVP, mayor, and then it has like a plus sign next to the flow. Those stand for either they're active or they're disabled. And then I have my own flags, which are specific to just me because I'm the owner. For example, I have container permission because it has a positive next to it, as where everyone else does not. And you can tell by the negative next to container. So it allows people to either, it either gives certain people permissions or gives a whole group permissions, things like that. So to set up flags, let's say I want people to be able to teleport to my residence. Right now it's set to false, so only I am the person that can teleport to this residence, but if I type in res set and then tp, which is the name of that flag, 
and then I do true, which will enable it for everyone. Enter. And now that's enabled, so if I do res info again, you can see next to TP it has a positive, which means anyone can teleport here now. Same for PvP right now, no one can PvP in this residence. But if I do res set PvP true, now all bets are off. Anyone can go murder spree inside my little dirt shack here. A useful thing to do when you set up a residence is do res set monsters and then do false which makes it inactive and what that does is it makes it so no aggressive mobs can spawn within that residence a very useful one indeed the server is restarting so i'm going to go ahead and type in boobs and pause this and we'll continue in a second and we're back next i'll show you how you can list all the different flags you can use in a residence I'm not going to go over every single one. To see all that, what you do is you type in res flags and then question mark. And that's going to give you a list and a brief description of what they do. So build is obviously allows or denies building permissions. And to go through the pages, you do res flags, question mark, space, you know, two for page two, so on and so forth. Some flags I will point out is res set egg hatch, false. And what that one does is so people can't throw eggs in your residence and pop out a bunch of chickens. Another one is res set butcher false, which makes it so if you have animals in a residence, other players cannot kill those animals. And there's one called mayor, M-A-Y-O-R, and that is the same thing as butcher, but for villagers. Now I'll show you how to apply flag permissions to specific players. Like if you have someone you trust and you want them to be able to say open a, a chest that's within your residence, then I type in res p set. So you do p for player, so p set, and then the player's name, so I'll type in someone else's name on the server, and I'll do container permission, and set that to true. And now when I do res info, hold on a second, I have a visitor. Okay, and now when I do res info, you can see where it says other flags, it says Andro, he has container permission, as where everyone else still does not have container permission. Just me and the, the specific player that I have given permission to. And you can do that with the opposite. Let's say you really hate someone, and you don't want them to be able to TP to your residence, then you do the same thing, res p set, and then you type in that player's name, and then you do the flag, which is TP, and then false, which makes it inactive for that player. Now that person cannot use the teleport as where everyone else can. Another good flag is move. If you really hate someone, you set move to false. So that's how you do P set, player specific flags. I'm going to go ahead and talk about subzones now. Subzones are pretty much a res within a res within a res. It's like how deep can you go? Well, actually it's only a res within a res. You can't go further than that. I'm currently standing in a res. I know because type in res info and it gives me the info for the residence I'm in. To create a subzone within a residence, uh, you have to be standing in, in a residence already built, which I am in. And then you select your area. So I'll select from here to there. Expand to the sky just a few blocks. And now what you want to do is res subzone space and then the name of the subzone you want inside of that res. Test. Why the hell not, right? It says welcome to metro.test. Metro is the name of the residence and then test is the name of the subzone in that residence and it's separated by a period. And it works exactly like its own residence. So if I do res info, you know, it has all its own flags which are completely separate from, say, the flags that the residence it's in. Subzones are useful for uh, a few reasons. One is like a, an added teleportation point. So for this big residence I'm in, if I do res tp metro, it takes me right here. But if I do res tp metro period sky, which is the name of a subzone in the residence, it's going to take me to the very top where I have that subzone located. So, that's an example of two teleportation points within only one residence. Another useful feature is letting people do things they can't normally do in the rest of the residence. Like here I have a store, 
and I obviously don't want people to have the function to remove and place blocks, but I have right here a posting wall where anyone is allowed to post messages in my store. And to do that, I have a subzone which ranges from where I just put this blank sign over to where I put this blank sign. So in that little area, people have the option to open this box and they also have the option to place and remove blocks. And uh, always double check to see if you're in a subzone. You can just do res info and then look at it and it says I'm in the residence Walmart period job, which is the name of the subzone. If I walk one block over and type in res info again, as you can see, it just says Walmart without the period job. So that subzone is used to allow people to post message boards within my store. So great for if you have, say, like a hotel type thing and you want people to have their own rooms within your, your hotel. To rename a subzone, it's a little different. You do res rename and then you have to do the name of the subzone with the residence it's in. So for this one, we'll do Metro period test is the old name and we want to change it to the new name. And now you can just call it whatever you want. You don't have to do the name of the residence first. So we'll just do test one. So we're going to rename it to test one and it's been done. So that's how you would rename a subzone. And then to remove it, same way you would remove a residence, but uh, make damn well sure you're inside of the subzone and not the residence. So res remove. And it says, are you sure you want to delete subzone test one? Make sure it says subzone and not the residence. And then do res confirm. And now that subzone is no longer in existence. Real quick, I'll go over some random commands. If you want to give a residence to someone else, you type in res give um, the name of the residence, like Metro, and then the player that you want to give it to. I'm going to give it to myself, see if it even lets me. So what I did is I pretty much just transferred my own residence to myself. Now they don't have to, the other player doesn't have to accept. Once you type in that command, it happened. So be careful when you're giving a residence to someone. Another command, um, let's say you're stuck in a residence of someone else's and you want to get out of it, you type in res unstuck. And that's going to put you somewhere on the very edge of that residence. So this is the edge of the residence which I was standing in. I was right over there. The residence plugin does have a lot of uh, commands related to economy type stuff. But on the Woodnax server that I'm playing on, that's all disabled. So I won't talk about any market, you know, slash res market commands here. You'll have to discover those. And if you need help on a resident command and you can't remember what it is, you can always type res question mark and that leads you to the whole you know help pages where you can go through all that stuff and figure it out on your own alrighty that's all I'm gonna teach you for now rest I'm gonna do is just things we've already learned like I need to get rid of this test residence so I'm gonna go ahead and do res remove and because I'm standing in it I don't need to type in the name of it it already knows what I'm talking res confirm and now on this residence over here I have it set up so this fool Calzor cannot TP or move in it, which I don't need those anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those for him. So I'll type in res p set, the player's name Calzor, and then I'm going to do TP. And I'm going to type in not false or true, but remove because I don't need that there at all. It just needs to go and do the same thing, but with move as well. So remove. Now when we do res info. That's gone. He now has permission like everyone else does here. And an advanced command, I have another residence called Walmart, and I'm not even there, but I can change permissions if I wanted. So if I wanted to change permissions for a res that I'm not even around, let's say there's some jackass on the server that I don't want to have movement permission in my residence. So let's do some advanced commands. Let's, we're going to type in res pset. The name of the residence you want this all to go down in, which is called Walmart for me, the person that you hate and you don't want to have movement permission, Larze, and then the command you want, which is going to be move, and then you want to set that to false. Flag set. Now I'll go to that residence that I have changed, res tp Walmart, and do res info. 
You can see in other flags next to that person's name, they have no movement permission here. So I did that while I wasn't even around this area. All right, that's about it for now. Johnny Knoxville out.